So hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a video on my experience in Curse You. Um, I'd really appreciate if you took the time to watch and listen and for me to share my story. So I got put in there after making an attempt to end my own life and I was in PRI for a few days and then someone just came around and spoke to me and was like, you're going to curse you. I was like, I didn't even know what it was or what it was like or anything. And then when I first got admitted, I was put on, I was put straight on observations. And for the those that don't know what that means, it means that um you have like a nurse with you at all times. So literally, I was just like walking about the place, and then I just like look behind me, and there was just a nurse following behind me, and that that was horrible. So I wasn't allowed out for a few days. Well, I can't really remember how long it was, but I wasn't allowed out, so my visitors visitors would have to like come and see me at the ward, and then because I was still on observations. Like, the nurses would, like, sit there and watch as well as I had my visitors in, which was, like, really awkward because you, like, you couldn't speak or do anything. But anyway, after being in for a few days and not being allowed out anywhere, um, I finally got my first day out and it was my mum and my big sister came up to see me and I was allowed out to go to Nine Wells, the cafe with them, for something to eat and that, so that was good. So yeah, after a few days of me being in, I really wanted out and at that time, I, at that point, I wasn't detained or anything so legally they could let me out but I was so determined I wanted out so I told the nurses I, like, I want to leave so they, sh they phoned my um, MHO straight away and told, told her that I wanted to leave so then she came and seen me straight away and she detained me up to 28 days so... I just wasn't allowed to leave or anything. So by then I was detained for up to 28 days so I had no way of getting out. So it just made me a lot worse. And then I was off my constant observations by like a few days later and I went back to like hurting myself and that but in the hospital obviously. And then I was constantly getting restrained in that. But whilst they were restraining me, they were like physically leaving like bruises and marks all over me. Everything was just becoming so bad and I was getting restrained a few times a day. And I was getting IM'd whilst I was getting restrained. And if you don't know what IM'd is, it means you were given an injection. So I'd just get pinned down to the floor and then they'd give me, they'd give me an injection. Like not, not without my consent or anything. I also remember one day, um, someone that used to support me, um, was leaving me. Like she was up visiting and she was leaving because um she was going away, and I wouldn't get to see her again. So I didn't want her to go, so I was stopping her from going. But then the nurses all came and like started holding me back and that, and let her go. So then that made me really upset. So then I'd kicked a hole in the wall, and they all came like running, and they clicked the big alarms. So like everyone from different words come running along and they came they all came running in and they restrained me and they gave me another injection i just got on sort of hand and i was in constant restraints every day and um there was one day they gave me they gave me an injection um but it was like a really bad one like the side effects like i was i was sleeping all the time um I could hardly walk and I could hardly talk. I remember one day my mum and my big sister came up to see me and you know how horrible hospital food is. So like to get anything other than that, it's just amazing. So they brought me McDonald's and like I physically couldn't eat it. I just wasn't eating at all. And then another day my mum and my wee sister came up and I went for a shower and I fainted twice. And another another day, um I was when the Christmas light switch on was on, I went to I I was allowed out for the day to go to it. So I got out and um I got there and then I s I wasn't able to walk like I was I was okay to start off with and then it got to the point I stopped being able to walk in there and I just remember the paramedics like I remember seeing the paramedics and them checking me over now and me getting sent back to the ward. This all lasted for about a week and I just had no energy or no motiva motivation to do anything. 
was just horrific. It just wasn't a good time and I was really ill at the time of just what they were giving me. So like I was getting visitors regularly in that. So um they would they seen me what I was like in that and just how bad I was. So they had contacted the mental Welf mental Wel welfare commission and they came out and spoke to me but nothing was done about it. My mum and my sisters were just really upset with how bad I was. So it still continued to go on really bad and one day I'd done something really dangerous which I'm not going to say on this but yeah I'd done something really dangerous and I had messaged my sister, my big sister and told her and she was worried so she um phoned the ward straight away and told them and then they just came running to my room and they straight away took my phone off me and I had no phone for about a week, a couple of weeks um, and then I was taken straight to A&E um yeah so i went to a e and e and i got x-rays done and then i was lured back to the ward so i got back to the ward and straight away they put me on special observations so that means like um you have someone with you all the time but in arm reach so you have like someone like sat right beside you and obviously and it's also no privacy so like if i went to the shower or the toilet um they'd be there with me it was just horrible and i've never experienced anything worse I was also put in a stripped room, so I had nothing in there at all. And like they even took my ma they even took my bed away and put my mattress on the floor, so I was sleeping on the floor in a mattress. They stopped all visitors, so nobody was allowed to come and see me. And if somebody phoned, I wasn't allowed to speak to them on the phone. I got made specified, so I wasn't allowed my phone, and I so I didn't get that back for weeks. And then when I did start to get it back, I was only allowed on it like a few hours a day. They would keep it most of the time everything was just bad in there and i literally had like incident after incident and i'd always get put on observations but some of the time it was even on two on one so i'd have two staff on me i can remember getting put in a room with just like foam cushions and that and the toilet the bathroom was locked and then there's somebody sat at my door not letting me out that's literally all I can remember, but I was in there for five months, and then as to like the last month before I got out, I, I did start to get a wee bit better, and I was like having laughs with the nurses and that, but it was quite good then. So don't get me wrong, there was really nice nurses there, and then there was just some that you don't like, as everywhere you go there's people you don't like. Like some of them would take me out on walks and that or to nine wells to the cafe for a drink, for a drink. So I was 16 when I got put in there and I was in there for a total of five months but I shouldn't have went through quite as much as I did. Thanks to everyone that's watched this video and took the time to listen. I wouldn't even want my worst enemy to be there. It's just a disgrace of a place and the place needs shut down. If any of you are ever feeling down or low, don't leave it too late like I did and speak to someone and please do not ever hesitate to message me like I'll always be here and to listen.